Hey class, in today's video lecture, we'll talk about the last of our 4C style principles, cohesion. We'll start out by defining our terms by talking about what the word cohesion means, and we'll then discuss some tips for structuring messages, which is just another way of saying tips for writing cohesively. So let's start by defining our terms. The first thing you need to know here is that cohesion primarily enhances your writing at the paragraph and at the document level. Clarity and concision, as you may recall, primarily enhance your writing at the sentence level. Continuity enhances your writing at the paragraph level. And cohesion enhances your writing at both the paragraph and document level. It does so in two main ways. First, Cohesion gives messages structure. And second, cohesion helps readers understand the point of both paragraphs and documents. It's essential to good writing because without cohesion, readers don't know what to expect from your writing, nor do they know what to take away from your writing. But how do we achieve cohesion? How do we write well structured? documents. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that in order to craft well-structured writing, you want to preview and summarize points in both paragraphs and documents. By previewing and summarizing points, you're basically providing your reader with a framework that they can insert new information into as they navigate your document. It's sort of like providing a map for navigating your document effectively. That's what good structure does. Cohesion works by taking advantage of the principles of primacy and recency. And in case you're unfamiliar with those terms, primacy and recency just refer to the importance of previewing and summarizing your main points. Primacy on the one hand describes readers' tendency to recall the first thing that they encounter in a body of text, therefore highlights the importance of previewing your main points. And recency describes readers' tendency to recall the last thing that they encounter in a body of text, and therefore highlights the importance of summarizing your main points. You can apply these principles actually quite simply. You can do so by using what we call head, body, foot structure, in both your documents and in paragraphs. Head, body, foot structure is very, very easy to apply. Here's how it works. You want to start both documents and paragraphs with summaries, or what we call heads. You then want to elaborate on these summaries or su support them with evidence in what we call bodies. And then finally, you want to close lengthy documents or paragraphs with conclusions, or what we call feet. And this structure should be very familiar to virtually all of you from previous writing classes. It's a, it's a, it's a classic principle of effective writing that you want to begin by previewing your main point and close by summarizing your main point. And it applies just as much in a business writing context as in any other. So now let's take head, body, foot structure. Let's take the principles of primacy and recency and think about how we would specifically apply them in different contexts, beginning with document level cohesion. At the document level, primacy and recency take the form of document heads and document feet. They can also take the form of what we call mapping statements, which we'll describe momentarily. You can use document heads and mapping statements to preview the points and the structure of longer documents, right? This is primacy at work at the document level. Now, uh, typically, document heads and mapping statements will consist of one sentence each but both can be much longer depending upon context, particularly if your document is lengthy or 
complex. Now let's take a look at examples of document heads and mapping statements. And here we've got a sample paragraph that contains both a document head and an opening mapping statement. The document head is that first sentence Educational norms in the U.S. differ from those in India. It's a simple, direct sentence that identifies the main point or purpose of this document. And then in that second sentence, we've got a mapping statement, a statement that previews the larger structure of the document. The most significant differences appear in the areas of student-professor relationships, citation practices, and student study habits. And this mapping statement works by listing the elements that the reader will encounter in the remainder of the document in the order that the reader will encounter them. So in the body of this document, we'd have a section or a paragraph uh, on student-professor relationships, and this should appear first, followed by a section or paragraph on citation practices, and lastly, a section or paragraph on student study habits. You want to use document feet, on the other hand, and concluding mapping statements to summarize both the point and the structure of longer documents. And as with those opening document heads or opening mapping statements, your document feet and your concluding mapping statements will typically consist of one sentence each, but may be longer if your document is particularly lengthy or complex. And to see what these look like, let's go back to our sample document. And here we have an example of a, a document foot as well as a closing mapping statement. In conclusion, American educational norms differ from Indian education uh, norms in three main areas, right? So that's the document foot summarizing the main point or purpose of this document. And then we've got the concluding mapping statement. These areas are student-professor relationships, citation practices, and student study habits. Again, uh, uh, summarizing the structure, the main supporting points of this document in the order that readers encountered those main points. Next, let's talk about paragraph level cohesion, how we'd apply the principles of primacy and recency at the paragraph level. At the paragraph level, primacy and recency take the form of paragraph heads and paragraph feet. Uh, paragraph heads combine features of both document heads uh, and mapping statements. They, they both summarize the purpose of a paragraph uh, while linking it to the, the larger point of the document as a whole. Paragraph heads, uh, like document heads, are typically one sentence in length, and they typically appear at the beginning of a paragraph, but they may be longer depending upon the complexity uh, of your paragraph or the specific context of the paragraph, and they may arrive later than the first sentence. To illustrate the importance of paragraph heads, let's take a look at a sample paragraph that in its current form does not have a paragraph head. So we've got these, these sentences here on the left. At Disney World, a lunch put on an expense account is, quote, on the mouse, unquote. McDonald's employees have ketchup in their veins. Memos at Procter & Gamble are called Ricos because the um, model PNG memo begins with a recommendation. Now, uh, all of those individual sentences are perfectly clear. They, they, they make perfect sense. Uh, but this overall paragraph, it lacks cohesion. We're not, we're not sure what the point of this paragraph is because it lacks that opening uh, paragraph head. And you can see by adding a single sentence, a single paragraph head, all of a sudden this paragraph becomes significantly more cohesive. And here is the sentence that could bind uh, all of these following sentences together. Business slang flourishes at companies with rich corporate cultures. Note how that, that single opening sentence 
uh, brings all of these sentences together and makes them feel cohesive. It provides a structure, a framework, a unifying meaning for this body of text. Now, uh, I also want to give you an example of how, uh, how paragraph heads can not only summarize the purpose of a paragraph, but also connect it to the larger purpose of the document. And to illustrate that, let's go back to uh, our sample document about uh, educational norms in both, uh, US, both the US and India. And here, we're going to take those sample body paragraphs and we're going to create uh, paragraph heads that uh, summarize the purpose of the paragraph while linking it back to the overall purpose of the document. So instead of simply having these placeholders on student-professor relationships, citation practices, and student study habits, we're going to replace them with these lengthier paragraph heads. The first major difference between education norms in the US and India involves student-professor relationships. Note how the underlying portion of that sentence links back to the overall purpose of the document, while the content in green indicates the specific purpose of this paragraph or section. In the, the second uh, paragraph head, we've got another major difference between the American and Indian approaches to education concerns citation practices. And again, it serves that dual purpose that we saw in the previous example, both uh, reminding the reader of the overall purpose of this document while hinting at or indicating the purpose of this specific paragraph or section. And lastly, in our section on uh, paragraph level cohesion practices, remember that you wanna use paragraph feet to summarize a paragraph's purpose, but only when your paragraph is particularly long or complex. Uh, a good rule of thumb for me is that if you have forgotten what the paragraph is about while you've written it, that's a good indication that either A, you need to break up the paragraph, or B, that you need a paragraph foot to summarize the purpose of that paragraph and ideally connect it back to the overall purpose of your document. And that brings us to the end of this video lecture. As a reminder, cohesion primarily enhances your writing at the paragraph and document levels. It gives messages structure, and it helps readers understand the point of both paragraphs and documents. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody.